Hey Bomb Pushers, Nick here and today we are going to be taking a look at the review of Scrap for the Nintendo Switch. This was developed by Woodland Games and published by Ultimate Games. At the moment it is only available for the Switch and it was released at the back end of June. As always the written review is up on the website and the link for that is in the description below. Subscribe to the channel for more gaming videos, but for now, let's get to it. Now, the concept of Scrap is about as simplistic as you could possibly hope to ever get without actually not having a story at all. You play as a robot who's broken free from the confines of his factory and strives for the sweet, sweet release of freedom from his robot overlords. So he, maybe she, it's uncertain, starts running and doesn't ever stop. And this is where you come in, as you're the only thing standing between the little robot and certain death. There's still plenty of death happening all around you, and you will die hundreds and hundreds, and potentially even hundreds of times, but at least you get to control it, I guess, is some sort of weird silver lining. The game is split over three different areas. Uh, there's a factory, steamworks, which may as well just be a green factory, and a junkyard. And each of these areas have ten different levels to run through, plus a bonus level, but more on the bonus levels in a little bit. All of the levels are littered with traps waiting to make you ungracefully explode into a dozen different pieces, so you'll need to avoid spikes, lasers, different shaped guard robots and massive holes in the ground while trying to reach the end of the level alive. The complication here though is that you have no control over the actual movement of the robot. It's constantly moving forward whether you're ready or not and all you can do is jump, double jump, or drop down to the lower level. So absolutely everything you do comes down to timing, and you need to try and get your limited movements spot on if you want to survive. This is especially true later on in the game, when you move a lot faster and the traps are a whole lot more plentiful. To make things mildly less brutal every now and then, the game will offer up a power-up for you to grab. They only last a certain amount of time and they offer up a few different perks. There's some that give you a shield that will allow you to take an extra hit without dying. There's some that will allow you to roll on the lasers, some that allow you to jump higher, or a magnet that will pull in any nearby power cells. Power cells by the way, serve no purpose to the game like whatsoever, other than being something you need to unlock the bonus levels. The power-ups are completely optional, so if you don't want to grab them, then that's completely up to you. Um, all they do is open up a different path, but there's normally a few different paths through the levels, so it doesn't really matter. Every level of the game has one main objective, and that is to reach the end of it alive, which is you know, simple. Uh, this is all you need to do to actually move the story forward and eventually complete the game. As massively underwhelming as completing the game actually is. However, if you want a little bit of extra challenge, then you can tackle the optional objectives that are offered up on each level. 
every level has three of them and thankfully they stack so you don't have to get them all in one run through if you don't want to pretty much every level has an objective of collect a certain number of power cells as well as don't die that one being the real pain in the ass but some of the others can revolve around jumping a certain number of times on a level or only taking an upper or lower path if you manage to complete all of the optional objectives within an area then you're rewarded with a bonus level and these are horrible they play out like first bonus level as an example it's normal you have to dodge all the obstacles and get to the end except instead of being in the middle of the screen the robot is on the right of the screen which means you have far less time to react to everything and it just makes dying that much easier but you know you finish it you're proud and you get a congratulations from the game and nothing else just nothing nothing else Now, anyone who can look at Scrap and tell you it isn't adorable is honestly and truthfully dead on the inside because the little robot in this game is absolutely adorable and honestly, I want to hug him. The, uh, the junkyard area offers a nice little bit of difference to the scenery of the game um, as well, but the factory and the steamworks they're just a little bit samey plus all of the obstacles and traps are more or less identical across all of the different levels which seems like somewhat of a missed opportunity thankfully there's a number of different robot guards that you'll need to avoid so i mean that's something i guess uh, it would have been nice to have something extra for getting through the game like some new skins for the robot or something like that literally anything to help keep you motivated they're just there's there's just nothing the way it stands at the moment now i don't often get the urge to mute games when i play them but god damn did the soundtrack to this game get on my nerves in a big way uh, considering that the game tries as hard as it can to kill you over and over and over and over again the fact that the music restarts every time you die means that you are going to be stuck listening to the same loop over and over again which if nothing else just adds to the overall frustration of things I actually liked the fact that you had no control over the movement of the robot and just had to focus on jumping and dropping down there's a definite challenge to that sort of gameplay and some of the levels are really tough and I guarantee you one thing and that's that you will die a lot playing this game um, but the downside is after the first chapter you've pretty much got all you're gonna get out of the game and nothing really happens in the other two chapters other than it being a slightly faster paced so yeah there's there's so many opportunities in the game for it to kind of offer up more rewards for completing certain challenges or obstacles but there just wasn't anything i just kept waiting for something to happen and it just never did which was it just a real shame As a final summary, um, I absolutely love the idea of Scrap going into it. Um, the first chapter is really enjoyable, but there was this slow realisation that I'd got everything I was going to get out of the game, and this was in the first 20 minutes of playing it, and that's just a sad realisation. There's so much potential to the game, but sadly it just ended up feeling massively hollow and ultimately very underwhelming. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is Scrap for the Nintendo Switch. 
the overall score that I have given this game is a 4 out of 10 which is in the button pushing cushion rating uh, disappointing I wanted this to be amazing I wanted to love this game and I just didn't it just did not deliver in really any aspect that I wanted it to so unfortunately there it is thank you very much for watching if you like the video then hit the like button subscribe for more gaming videos and until next time hear the music